Hi, I'm Phileas Dane and I'm the safari expert and this week I'm in the Maasai Mara. I'm here with Stu Porter of Wild for African Photo Safaris and our local guide Mamai, who you'll meet a little bit later. We're staying at the stunning Entum camp right here on the bank of the Mara River. It's the second week of August and from what we've heard the great migration has arrived in the area. Now we only have four days but we're going to do our level best to find them and hopefully show you a crossing or two as well. Now, if you like what you see, I've got some good news for you because early next year, I'll actually be leading two wild four trips to this area. In late February, I'll be leading a big Cats of the Mara trip and then early in March, a Best of East Africa trip, which includes Amboseli, the Ngorogoro Crater, the Serengeti, and then the far south around Ndutu, where the wildebeest give birth. For now, let's go and get our photo vehicle ready and head out on our first game drive. Wild 4 African Photo Safaris have two amazing vehicles in Kenya that were custom designed for wildlife photography. Before we headed out, we quickly stopped under a tree to set everything up for our first game drive. At the top, I'll link to another video where Wild 4's founder, Stu Porter, shows you all the modifications that make this the best vehicle for wildlife photography in all of Kenya. On our very first drive, we had a glimpse of a massive male leopard along the Rongai River. I must admit, the number of vehicles in the sighting had me worried, but Stu assured me that we'd have some amazing sightings over the coming days despite the crowds. And I didn't have to wait long to see exactly what he meant. The following afternoon, we found a mother cheetah and three cubs that had just killed a Thompson's gazelle. Within half an hour, there were a string of cars on either side of us. But amazingly, everyone tried their best not to park in each other's way. If you ignored all the people next to you and focused on the animals themselves, it was actually a great sight, especially photographically. Another thing to get used to in the Maasai Mara is the fact that the Maasai herdsmen and their cattle are allowed to walk and graze alongside the wild animals. Their presence didn't detract from the experience at all. In fact, for me, it actually enhanced it. Without much warning, a spotted hyena dashed in and stole the remainder of the cheetah's meal, forcing them to move on. Earlier that morning, we decided to get up early and cross over to the Mara Triangle in search of the mega herds of wildebeest. So, it's only 6 o'clock in the morning. You can see I'm still half asleep, recovering from all the traveling. Today, we've decided we're going to head out for most of the day to try and find the Great Migration. Those massive herds of wildebeest and zebra and whatever other species might be traveling with them. We've packed some breakfast, we've packed some lunch. Now, we've just got to go out and find them. So we're at the entrance of the Mara Triangle um, and there's a cool map here. Um, Stu, what's the plan today? What, are you, what exactly are we going to do in the Mara Triangle side? Yeah, well today our plan is to enter across the bridge, uh, across the Mara River and then we're going to head all the way through and search in this area where we believe the big mega herds are. Shortly after entering the Mara Triangle, we caught up with the Great Migration. Tens of thousands of wildebeest made their way to patches of freshly burned plains that were covered in short green grass.
As you can see behind me, we're already finding more and more wildebeest here on the Mara Triangle side. So yeah, I think we've made the right call. So while we're looking at thousands of wildebeest, the million dollar question people always have is when is the best time to come to the Mara specifically if you want to see crossings? I know it's not as easy as just, you know, yeah. pick a date. With your years of experience, what would you say is a good time of the year and what can people expect? Yeah, yeah it's not an exact science as you say, but it's, um, you know, any time I'd say late July, August, September, even all the way up to early November, I've had some good crossings. Yeah. So sometime during that period, but the core period is usually August, September. Yeah. Um, and that's when you get the mega herds crossing from the side we're on now, the triangle side, over to the other side. But they also come back again. So you, there's no specific side to be on. You could yeah. be on either side and get them coming towards you or getting them going away from you. So it's just a bit of, of luck of which way they come. As it got hotter, a small herd of wildebeest on the other side of the Mara River started walking towards one of the main crossing points. So we parked close by waiting to see whether they would actually cross. So we've been spending most of the morning with massive, massive herds of wildebeest. Certainly one of the most amazing wildlife experiences I've had of my life so far. We've come back down to the Mara River and there's a relatively small herd of wildebeest on the other side. And we're hoping they're going to join the bigger herds on this side. But um, with these things, you never know how long it's going to take. So we're going to grab some of the lovely uh, breakfast and lunch that Intim packed us, make some coffee, and then see whether we get lucky. Uh, Stu, um, have we got enough food there? <laughs> There's so much food here, it's ridiculous. Let's have a look. Oh, oh. Holy smokes. Hey, hey oh my, that looks good, man. <laughs> What's your gut feeling about the crossing, eh? Is it a 50 50 or think there's a good chance? Well, it's uh, quite promising at the moment, so we're hoping for the best. We're just uh, having our coffee, hoping them they are going to cross anytime soon. After about an hour, a few brave souls carefully approached the river, and then they started to cross. Oh, shame, man. One of the wildebeest didn't make it across. Two big crocodiles took it down. But there you go. First crossing, absolutely perfect between Stu and Mamai. They got the timing and the positioning spot on. And yeah, again, for me, dream come true. On this safari, we stayed at Entam Mara, a small, unfenced tented camp with 12 luxurious safari tents.
What I love most about Entom is the fact that it's located right on the bank of the Mara River, offering amazing views no matter where you find yourself in camp. The camp is beautifully designed and decorated, and most importantly, extremely comfortable. Intim forms part of the Wilder Group that also operates hot air balloon safaris, and on our second morning, I decided to see the Mara from above. Yeah. Whew. The reason I'm getting up so early this morning is I've got a hot air balloon ride scheduled with hot air safaris. So, time to wake up. The cushion down there is for your bottom. So you don't want your head hanging out. You want to be all the way down onto that. You should be able to rest your head back. That's right folks. Time to get into our basket for this morning's hot air balloon ride. <laughs> right, here we go. Okay, across the field. <laughs> <laughs> this feels weird. We gathered at the launch site before sunrise, and shortly after seven, we took to the skies. That's good, That's eh? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Magic, eh? Yes. Floating in a hot air balloon is probably the closest you'll ever come to knowing what it must feel like to be an eagle soaring over the Great Plains. Below us, we saw an amazing variety of animals. So apparently one of the guys ahead of us in one of the other balloons just saw a pride of lions below us next to the river. So we've gone nice and low. Hopefully we'll see them. So our Captain Riz just spotted one of the lions. It's walking just next to the riverbed. We're going to go back down low again and hopefully get a good view. That's unbelievable. First time for me to see lions from the air. There they go. Look, they're going all along the edge of the river there. Oh yeah, going in the riverbed. Oh, that's cool. We're going to water after that. They were going to get the hippo. Here's the hippo. Here's the hippo. That's where you can get something nice to drink. And then we will have one table for our balloon. So we'll all meet at Wow, what an unbelievable morning. We've just landed and we're at a little breakfast station here now. And I must say folks, if you want to treat yourself to something truly special here in the Masai Mara, book yourself a balloon ride with Hot Air Safaris. I'll leave their contact details in the description below. Now, let's go grab some breakfast. Remember to bring some cash with if you'd like to leave gratuities for your pilot and the chefs or if you'd like to order some of the photos taken while you were in the balloon. Thank
that afternoon we had an incredible leopard sighting. This leopard's incredibly relaxed. She uh, doesn't mind being surrounded by vehicles. And luckily for us, she walked down to this little riverbed here, um, watched a couple of Egyptian geese, and then decided to turn around. But we've got about half an hour of light left. Um, so fingers crossed, we're gonna get her doing something really nice. It started out like the one before with loads of other people around us. But when someone else spotted some lions nearby, most of them left in a hurry. And that's when we witnessed something truly special. A leopard standing up on her hind legs to see over the tall grass. Shortly after, the female named Luluka walked onto a termite mound for a better view of her surroundings. Her daughter, Jilime, also treated us to an unforgettable sighting when she posed beautifully in the fork of a tree. As always, a massive crowd had gathered to admire her, but that didn't scare her away. In fact, when she finally came down, she actually ran towards and past us to where she had spotted a potential meal. On our second last morning, we headed northwest beyond the Talek River in search of the Topi Lion Line. So this morning we've come to a slightly different area to where we've been driving over the last few days. We've come to this Rhino Ridge area looking for the Topi Lion Pride. And Stu just spotted some vehicles in the distance, so let's see whether we can find them. So quite a few of the Pride members are here. There's a female here in front of us uh, with three cubs and then behind us a big beautiful male. But the grass is quite tall so who knows there might even be more of them around. At the moment as you can see behind me there's still quite a bit of cloud cover but we're hoping within the next 20 minutes half an hour it's going to clear up and we'll have beautiful golden light on it. It's just been the most crazy morning here next to Rhino Ridge. The Topi Pride is about 20 lions strong and there's just been action all around us because the Pride's very split up. The cubs are behind us, there's females here, there's females there, there's females there, the males there and uh, yeah just wherever we drive lions pop up. So we had one female jump onto a termite mound um, where she was watching some topi. We just watched a female, well two females actually nearly take down a zebra and then these little cubbies have been very sort of alert watching the mothers go about their business. So yeah unbelievable time spent here with the topi pride. You won't believe it, while we were at the lions close to Rhino Ridge, we got a call from camp saying that there's a big herd of wildebeest heading towards Entum and they might cross. In fact, we think they may have started crossing already. So we're back at camp. Uh, let's see whether we're in time. Okay. You, you go where you think it's best. 
There we go, the crossing has started. We're gonna go and get into position, see what we can get. Wow, what an unexpected bonus to see a river crossing right here in front of Entam Camp, which I've learned over the last few days is a great central base here in the Masai Mara. And I thought let's quickly talk about the Great Migration, because so often people say, Philia, when is the best time of the year to see the Great Migration? When in actual fact they're talking about river crossings. Now the Great Migration is something that takes place right throughout the year. And it starts in the southern tip of Serengeti and northern parts of the Ngorogoro Conservation Area in an area called Ndutu, when the great herds of wildebeest give birth around late February and early March. In April they start moving north and west and by June they're typically around an area called the Grumeti River in western Serengeti. Only in late July do they typically cross from Tanzania into the Masai Mara and that's when you can start expecting to see crossings. So if that's something on your bucket list to see one of these big crossings, visit the Masai Mara in August, September or October. And just remember that they cross back and over and back and over over the Mara River so you never really know exactly where the best part is going to be. Luck does play a role. There are crossings as late as early November, but typically that time of the year they start moving south again and throughout December and January they move all the way down the eastern tip of the Serengeti to get back to those great open plains to give birth in late February. In the short time that I had spent there, the Masai Mara had been extremely good to me. Not only had I seen the Great Migration and a couple of epic river crossings, as well as lions, leopards and cheetah, but I was also mesmerized by this breathtaking landscape with its rolling hills, large open plains, stunning rivers and mind-blowing sunrises and sunsets. Not to mention a massive number and variety of animals. The cherry on top was a sighting of an extremely relaxed serval on our final afternoon game drive. Oh, that was the most unbelievable thing. We had just looked at, what were we looking at Stu? I can't even remember before eland. we left. Yeah, we're looking at some eland and uh, we're driving and suddenly I asked Stu, how often do you see servals in this area? And he hadn't even half answered me, literally five seconds later the serval walked out right in front of us in the open. Mamai's local knowledge and Stu's photographic guiding made the trip extra special. And I can't tell you how impressed I was with the Wild 4 photographic vehicle. Being able to stand up shooting unobstructed or building a custom beanbag wall to exactly the right height was invaluable. As a wildlife photographer, you'll struggle to find a better way to explore and capture the Masai Mara. 